Hi there team. Welcome to another update on the situation in Iceland. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Today is Friday, March 15th. It is about noon here, mountain daylight time, 6 p.m. in Iceland. Thanks for joining me. I had done a previous update on Wednesday, March 13th, prior to my interview with Amanda Joe, but a few things had popped up um, coming out of Iceland that I wanted to do one more update this week while we're sort of waiting to see what happens and transpires there, especially regarding some of the, what I consider to be some conflicting information, not information, conflicting opinions, I suppose, coming from some of the Icelandic scientific community, which I thought we would highlight here today. Um, I did this morning, earlier today, interview, do an interview and a discussion with Dr. Ariana Soldati, who is a volcanologist at North Carolina State University. I'm going to get that edited and uploaded and that will be launched and ready on my YouTube channel tomorrow, Saturday, March 16th. So you can look for that. I had a really great, we had a great discussion um, about her research, her trip to Iceland, um, the things she does with uh, students, um, her outreach efforts. I think you'll find it really interesting and insightful. Uh, looking forward to the next few days or weeks. I'll try to do one more update on Iceland Monday or Tuesday if I can squeeze that in, uh, assuming nothing else takes place. And then I'll be leaving on the 20th for about a 10 day trip to uh, Prague and Vienna and coming back through New York City with my wife and some friends. But I'll be trying to do a couple videos while I'm out there in those locations. Maybe we'll find some random road cuts. In the meantime, I'll be sure to post and upload some other videos for you, some things to keep you busy in, on the geology front uh, during my time away. And I'll also take my laptop with me in case anything pops up that's um, exceptionally significant that I wanna talk to you about. So let's go to um, our update on Iceland for today. You can see it's pretty stormy weather there today. It actually was socked in pretty uh, remarkably earlier today and I think yesterday. Yesterday they had some snow Today it's been mostly rain, but it's you know windy weather, nasty conditions, and that of course is affecting the ability to acquire some of the seismic data. So here's our last 24 hours uh, selecting for all earthquake magnitudes, even the negative ones over here in the Reykjanes Peninsula. And you can see just not a lot of earthquake activity, again, probably due to the weather conditions. If we look at just the last six hours, again, just not a lot on the graph there, excuse me, on the map regarding seismic activity. If we go to the Met Office uh, summary of seismic data over the last 48 hours, we can see that similar trend, uh, especially looking at the last 12 hours or so, you can just see a absolute paucity of uh, seismic signals detected there, probably not completely reflecting the true earthquakes taking place there, probably related to the weather. But the main theme here with the earthquakes is we're just not seeing anything that seems to indicate that an eruption is likely or imminent. We're not seeing earthquakes um, that are being produced by magma propagating up towards the surface, either here where we have the vents near the Sunnux crater area or anywhere else in the region. So nothing at this point that indicates that we have any magma migration up towards the surface. Our GPS data uh, continues to monitor the movement of the ground in all three dimensions, north-south with this top graph, east-west motion, and then up-down motion. So if we looked at this up-down motion here for the Svartsengi GPS station, we can see that the trend has been pretty linear over time. Uh, since the last eruption on February 8th. And if you look at the last cluster data points, we might have had a little bit of a stall there, a little bit of an uptick, it, but it's still trending upward. So the inflation and the rise of the land seems to be ongoing. So that's magma moving upwards into the system, filling fractures, uh, voids in the subsurface, and uh, these rocks which are heated at depth are behaving more elastically than they have been prior because each, presumably each uh, magma filling event and eruptive event is, is heating up more of the crust and making it behave a little bit more elastically. That's why we're seeing uh, the GPS stations rising to elevations uh, that are in excess of what was needed 
in earlier eruptive events. So for example, on February 8th, this was uh, the highest elevation it reached before it erupted. Some of that magma left the system, came to the surface, dropped the GPS station back down, and now we've far exceeded um, that elevation at that station there. So we can look at a couple of these stations real quick. That's Fart Sangi. Uh, if we look at the Blue Lagoon station, similar trend, uh, still moving upwards, seems to be inflation is still happening there. If we look at Elvert station here off to the west, this one's interesting because it does have a little bit more of a, a stair step appearance to it where it sort of rises steeply, maybe plateaus or ascends less steeply over time. Uh, but we can see this last little trend here of it kind of moving up and then maybe slowing down a little bit here. But it's still moving upwards for the most part uh, over time cohesively if we look at the whole thing as a system. So um, again, not a lot of data we're going to scrutinize with this update. What I want to spend the majority of our time doing here today is looking at some of the articles in the news and also some information from the Met Office. Um, and what I think is going on here, what it appears to me in just reading through these things is we have different Icelandic scientists that are making different interpretations of the data. And those interpretations are, are quite a bit different. And I think I even see a little bit of the Met Office doing possibly some damage control on their end to, um, and ultimately just saying, I think bluntly is the way I interpreted it, they disagree with some of the other um, interpretations that are out there. And of course, this is tricky to the public because the public wants a nice, cohesive, scientific story where all the scientists are in agreement, but it just doesn't work that way. We're looking at very incomplete data sets. We're looking at a very dynamic system. We're trying to figure out what's going on five kilometers under the surface in an area that hasn't had an eruption for 800 years. Um, these are hard things to do. And we're also looking at the last four months or so of eruptions and data and trying to figure out if that is at all reliable as a forecasting tool for what's going to take place moving forward. So I don't have a dog in the fight, so to speak. I don't have a necessarily a well, I have an opinion, of course, but I, I don't I don't have any knowledge of exactly how this is going to play out moving forward. And ultimately, neither do any of these scientists. But when you model a system and make an interpretation, um, then sometimes that looks like it's your opinion or prediction, if you will. I don't really like that word. And I think that's why we're seeing a little bit of disagreement here. So I'm wondering if you guys see the same thing. So let's go through. I might have read this last time, but I want to go through this again and get to another piece here. And I know we are going to be kind of summarizing and reviewing some of these Met Office updates, but I hope you find value in this because I think this is uh, important. So let's start with this one here. This is actually from yesterday, <clears throat> excuse me, Thursday. Uh, more uncertainty than before about the possible timing of the next eruption. Basically, this first paragraph, their models confirm that magma continues to accumulate under the power plant area at the same rate, more or less, and at the same place and depth. Um, it's been shown based on the eruptions in January and February and the intrusion on March 2nd that the total volume in the system had to reach at least about 10 million cubic meters before we actually had magma move from the reservoir off to the east. It's possible the timing of the next eruption uh, has been based on calculating, or the possible timing of the next eruption has been based on calculating the amount of magma that flows from the magma chamber under the power plant area to the Sunuk's crater, that's where the vents are, series each time, and then how many days it will take to accumulate again in a comparable amount of time under Svart Sengi. So that's the way they've been uh, predicting the, the, not really predicting, that's the wrong word, forecasting this sort of window of eruptions or in some cases magma intrusion events. We've gone over this graph before, so I don't want to spend it too much time, well, really any time looking at that again. I want to continue with the update, if that's okay. Uh, and the magma intrusion event on March 2nd, it's estimated there was about 1.3 million cubic meters of magma that moved from the magma body under the power plant area over to the vents off to the east, which is much, much less than in previous magma intrusions in the last few months. Since then, it's estimated that about 4 million cubic meters of magma has been added under Svart Sengi, but there's been no magma intrusion or eruption. So since the March 2nd intrusion, 
their estimates based on their models is that there's been an additional 4 million cubic meters of magma that have been pumped into the system. And I think the daily amounts right around, I think we'll get to it at some point, but I think it's around 400 cubic, 400,000, excuse me, cubic meters of magma per day. That's like a, an estimate there. This indicates that there may have been some change in the channel that the magma has traveled to traveled in to the Sunuk's crater series. So we've talked about that, that this March 2nd intrusion, I talked about this on my last update, seems to have changed the connectivity of the fractures, the pathways, the architecture that the magma follows underground in order to make its way to the surface or arrive at other places. And so Everything, everything we thought we knew about these magma pathways in the subsurface has been changed to a large degree. Uh, in light of this, there's now more uncertainty than before about how much magma must accumulate under Svartsangi to trigger a new magma flow and even an eruption. So everything we were using to kind of get a sense of what might be happening over the past three or so months, uh, that's all changed now. And now we've got to learn the rules of the game have changed and we've got to figure out what those rules are, if there even are rules to the game. There is therefore uncertainty uh, more uncertainty than now. There's more uncertainty now than before about the timing of the next magma flow and possible eruption. Should be noted that in the future there's the highest probability that it'll happen in the same area we've talked about. Okay, moving on to the next little section here. Uh, seismic activity northwest of Glindavik does not indicate that magma is on the move there. If the magma were to look were to look elsewhere than the way it has crossed the Sunuk's crater series, for example, west towards Elvarp or south of Thorpion. The precursor to a possible eruption in that area would be very intense earthquakes and deformation that would be clearly visible on measure, measuring instruments and satellite images. There are no signs of that at this point. So this paragraph, I think, is putting, um, you know, addressing some of the concerns that the we could get an eruption right underneath the power plant Blue Lagoon area, that it could move off and start erupting from uh, the Elverp area, which again is this system over here to the west that some Icelandic geologists have um, sort of insisted, I suppose is the right word, that the eruption is gonna end up here at some point. And the Met Office here is making a pretty bold statement, I think, that there's no way we're gonna get an eruption in any of these places unless we see clear indicators of deformation and in earthquakes as the magma propagates into those fractures it's got to widen those fractures it's got to break rock it's got to create a pathway to the surface or or expand an existing pathway and that means you're going to get earthquake signals which i totally agree is correct uh and then quite a few earthquakes yeah i don't think this part was was super helpful here anyway so that was the met office thing now let me go to the other end of the equation so yesterday there was also a few news articles that came out in iceland um and so i'll summarize this there were two uh, volcanologists haraldur sigurdsson and geophysicist grim bjornsson um talking about what might happen next and sort of forecasting how the system might change long term and their conclusion is that the whole magma accumulation magma accumulation under the area is slowing down and that they predicted the end of all this by late summer and so there's a reporter here that talks about it i'll be of course sure to put the links to these under the video description if you want to digest these on your own maybe watch the video i do believe the video has english subtitles because i did watch it so, uh, quote, they predict that the upheaval, upheaval at Godindavik will end in late summer, that is to say in four to five months. It can be recalled that during the eruption that began at the end of August 2014, Haraldur was so bold that he predicted in the fall that the eruption would end, would end at the end of February, beginning of March. He could hardly be more precise because the eruption was declared over on February 28th. Therefore, there's a reason to listen to his prediction. So, um, so this scientist, on the 2014 eruption at uh, that Barabunga, I can't remember which volcano that was or what eruption that was, but he uh, looked at the data, thought it would be ending by end of February, and it, and that was about when it, it ended there. So using that one uh, successful prediction, if you will, um, to establish some reliability there is sort of the way the, the, the article sort of steers you here. So they took the same data that the Met Office had and then they put together their own graph 
and extrapolated the data. So they basically looked at the last five or so, maybe there's six data points on there, eruptive or intrusive events in terms of magma supply here, um, and then extrapolated those out and made the projection that the whole thing would be over from sometime you know, early July to mid or early August. Um, and so they're they're extrapolating this along a linear trend. So, so this of course you know the, the this news item and the title that there's an end that you know scientists predict that this all this upheaval and volcanic and earthquake activity north of Grindavik is going to end at the you know actually predicting dates there. Uh, I think is exceptionally bold personally. Um, there's nothing wrong with extrapolating data, which means projecting it out into the future. I think the danger lies in in holding to that too much, especially when we know this is not necessarily, I mean, they're extrapolating it as a linear system. This is not, I think this is a dynamic system with lots of variables. I don't feel like that's maybe the most prudent way to look at the data, um, but certainly you could do that. And of course, if this, you know, during this window of time, if that's when the unrest dies down, then of course that would look like this interpretation was correct. And, you know, you can take that with what you will. So in light of this news, and this was on several different news sites in Iceland yesterday, uh, stories just like this one here. And so then we have, whoops, that's not going well. Um, uh, let me see if I can find it now. Then we have this, I almost would call it like a rebuttal is really what it is uh, from the Met office. This came out today. Um, so consider that story I just shared with you with a, a predicted end of the volcanic activity in that area um, in you know midsummer or so. And then let's, let's go through this Met office update. There are no clear signs that the earthquakes on the Reykjanes Peninsula and at Grindavik will end in the near future. It has been stated in the, by the Met Office that while the accumulation of magma under Svartsingi continues, there's a possibility of another intrusion and that it will lead to an eruption in the Sunuk's crater series. Before it is possible to predict the timing of the end of the ongoing sequence of events associated with this, clear signs must be seen that the flow of magma into the accumulation area has decreased significantly between the last events. The Met Office's interpretation of the available data shows no clear signs that this is the trend. So they're unequivocally stating that they're looking at the data too, and they don't see any signs right now, based on this, this update here, that th the uh, amount of magma moving upward into the system from depth has slowed down or is decreasing. Uh, I know it says Norwegian on here. That's the Google Translate. They've, this, of course, is the Icelandic Met Office. Uh, continuing, data and model calculations show that the amount of magma flowing into the collection area under the power plant region each day has remained constant during the last three events. So during the March 2nd intrusion, the February 8th eruption, and the January 14th eruption, I'll get to this graph here in a second, the amount of magma moving upwards into the system has been pretty much the same, around 400 thousand cubic meters per day. It has not changed between the three events that have happened since the beginning of the year. And then they, they uh, cite those three uh, magma events there. Based on the available data on the constant amount of magma that cu it accumulates, it is too early to predict the end of the sequence of events that began at the end of October last year. So they're taking a much more conservative approach that, hey, we see the data here too, that the amount of magma going into the system has dropped. You can see that clearly on this graph from early October into November, into December, into the last couple months. But it's it, but it's more or less held steady here. And we shouldn't project this downward trend off of these first three um, and continue that down till it gets to zero and then see what date it coincides with. Because that's essentially what those two scientists did was they put a linear trend on this, saw where it intersects with this zero point in terms of magma intrusion um, or magma supply and then noted where that intersected the timeline here on the bottom. So I think they are, th I think this is damage control from the Met Office, um, you know, uh, and I think unfortunately it presents a very 
confusing you know narrative for the public because you're looking at one story that tells you oh look the scientists are saying this probably be over by summertime and the met office is saying not so <laughs> like you know pump the brakes right um, in addition to this moving on it is important to note that between 2020 and 2022 there were four periods with breaks of varying lengths where magma accumulation was measured under Svartsenghi. Almost 16 months passed before magma accretion, which is still ongoing, resumed. So what they're saying is it's a system where magma moves into the system. There might be a lull and not much magma supply going into it, but then it can resume. And it's not a constant flow or a tapering flow. Uh, everything I know about magma influxes into a volcanic system is it tends to be episodic. Um, there's batches of magma that rise at any given time, and it is not a, a linear system by any means. So continuing on, in, in summary, they say, unfortunately, there is still considerable uncertainty as to when it can be said with complete certainty that this chapter of eruptions on the Reykjanes Peninsula and around Grindavik is coming to an end. So I thought that was just really uh, kind of an interesting back and forth, somewhat PR kind of battle if you will and maybe I'm over maybe I'm over dramatizing it a little bit but uh, interesting and then finally just to kind of wrap this up here uh, is our good friend Professor Thorderson who there was an article that came out today where he and we'll go through this as well he, he's kind of I think siding with the Met Office in that we're not out of the woods yet an eruption is likely but then also kind of gives a little bit of respect to um, his colleagues that predicted the end of this thing soon. So um, let's just kind of get, it says if there's no eruption, I think it's, uh, let's go to the, let's see, where is it at here that he talks about this? I'll put this link there as well. Um, basically he says, I think if there is more accumulation of magma than that, I would think that there's something that blocked the eruption channel. He's talking about that March 2nd event that's been going on, and then the magma could go in other directions. It could go to the northern part of the Sunukur or even the southern part, which would be very bad because that's closer to the town. But it could also jump into the fire thrower. The fire thrower is a reference to the Edvorp system off to the west. And then the functionality would move away from this infrastructure, but there is no way for us to predict how that scenario will turn out. The system has reached its limit, and it would not surprise me if it roars or erupts this weekend, but it can also go the other way. So he's saying he's expecting an eruption to take place soon as the inflation continues. It looks like that is the trend to him, but he's recognizing that it could erupt from some other place, potentially. Um, and then they ask him about looking at the prediction, if you will, from these other two scientists that they um, that their conclusion was that the upheaval at Grindavik will end in the late summer. What do you give for this was the question from the reporter. And he said, just a very interesting prediction. They use information that comes in about magma inflow, and it seems to have subsided over time. And if that process continues, then naturally this will end. So this is just a very interesting prediction, and it will be fun to watch and see if it comes true. So he's not, I think, you know, and I got this sense interviewing him. I don't think he's getting too uh, uptight about the whole thing. I don't think he's holding too tightly to any given outcome. I think he recognizes it's a di dynamic system. There's a lot we don't know. There's a lot of uncertainty and we just kind of have to wait and see where it goes. But clearly with the increased, the uh, continued inflation, the magma is still accumulating. Um, and it would seem to me and others that that would result in some sort of event, whether that's a magma intrusion event, maybe a new dike, uh, is formed, um, something like that. So he did say, I think it was in this one, uh, maybe not. No, maybe it was a different. Uh, yeah, maybe it was a different article I was looking at uh, where they talked about the, the magma being somewhat like dough, like consistency. It was an interesting comparison there. Oh, here we go. The magma could have become dough, meaning that the magma has cooled, but not completely solidified into rock. Um, and this is what I've talked about as well, and thus becomes stronger than before. And that holds back a lot of pressure. It's known that a similar amount of magma is now accumulated before the last eruption over 10 million cubic meters. So I think I'm, I'm seeing things similar to what he's seeing. And that is that this magma intrusion event maybe took that primary pathway 
injected some magma into it that has now started to cool and crystallize a little bit such that it is very viscous, slow to move and flow, and also difficult to break because it's just not brittle enough. And that's what inhibiting and sort of backing up the whole system. And whether this backed up system results in magma finally able to break through that conduit and erupt in the same places we've seen over the past um, few months in this area here, or whether that backed up magma body now breaks out in some other direction uh, in the subsurface and maybe up towards the surface potentially too as it finds other pathways and space for it to move that magma into. Because ultimately we have a space problem here, right? If you're bringing in more magma into this system and there aren't pathways for it to go towards, you can only raise the roof and bring the surface up so much that magma needs to go somewhere and will it go off to the east here as it has previously or will it move into some other pathway in the subsurface is all yet to be seen so kind of a long-winded uh, update here friends but I wanted to walk you through some of those articles and some of those competing views um, and let you make make up your mind for yourselves I, I of course I probably showed my cards and have a bit of an opinion there in terms of which one I thought was maybe a little more accurate or responsible. Um, but I respect all the viewpoints that were that were offered here and we'll just kind of have to see how it goes. So until next time, thanks again for joining me. I'll try to put together another update early next week unless we have something happen here in Iceland. Appreciate all your support for the channel and promoting geology education. And thanks so much. Have a great day. Appreciate you.